This is a home recording for We Are One Body Audio Theater. Son of a Sidewinder Written and read by Joe Potts I reckon I remember that day well as a body can. Ma had taken me to the general store like most Tuesdays. It were scorching, even for Arizona, dry and dusty. So I figure that's why Bart Euler was in a foul way. He was always bothering Ma anyhow, since Pa died a while back. He liked her in a worrisome way, but Ma had no interest in him. Fact is, I was sure she was mostly interested in him falling into a mine shaft but he never obliged her on that score. That day, though, he laid his hand on her. A mistake, you could say. In fact, I do say it. Ma screamed, but he laughed and grabbed her tighter. That's how he was, you see. He thought he owned the whole town and everyone in it, but he didn't. He only owned most of it. Another mistake was he didn't know Rattlesnake Rants was just coming in. Now, I should point out that folks called him Rattlesnake Rants mostly on account of they was ignorant, but I didn't call him that. I called him Mr. Rants. See, most folks thought Mr. Rants was some kind of freak. I knew it weren't true, though. Mr. Rants was my friend. He treated me nicer than anyone Except in Ma. And believe me, I was an ornery youngin that folks weren't interested in being kindly to. Ma said it was partly because of my crutches. He treated Ma real nice, too. But folks feared he could do things with sidewinders that weren't natural. Bad things. Even more so than his Pa, Sidewinder Slim. Well, there's some truth in that, I'll allow, but not like folks thought. Anyways, Mr. Rance right off told Bart Euler to unhand Ma. Uh, now, Mr. Euler weren't used to people ordering him, so he might be excused for what he did as he was in an unfamiliar situation. He said no son of a sidewinder could tell him what to do, and when Ma proceeded to object, well, that varmin slapped her right hard. That's when Mr. Rance took a hold of Ma and placed her out of harm's way and faced Bart Euler. And Mr. Euler drew his six-shooter, pointed it at Mr. Rance, and told him he was directly going to be the ugliest corpse in the territory. Well, you had to allow he actually was a particular kind of ugly. He looked scary, truth told. His head were all banged up and lumpy, his face scarred, his eyes kind of shaped funny, stretched out like. Folks said his paw let rattlers in his crib, and they bit him all up, even on his head. And they said that's why he didn't think right. But dang it, I was only eight years old, and I could see that Mr. Rance thought a sight straighter than those fools. Mr. Rance had told me what happened to him. You see, one time he were out prospecting with Sidewinder Slim, and Mr. Rance, just a youngin' mind you, slipped on loose rocks on a steep slope. So lickety split, he slid out of control down the hill banging his head and face on each and every rock as he went by. Yes, sir, it was bang, bang, bam, bam, rock after rock, like he didn't want none to feel bad for neglecting it. He said it hurt so bad, he wished he were bitten by a sidewinder instead, as no doubt it would have felt a lot better. He told me how he always got along swell with rattlers, but after visiting all them rocks, it was like he could talk to them. With his mind, that is, as them sidewinders hear worse than old lady Gummitch. And when he talked, 
They obliged by listening. Anyhow, Mr. Euler's threat were the dead blasted last straw. Mr. Rance flung his mouth wide open and let loose with the most consarned, you'll pardon my cussing, uh, the most consarned awful sound I'd ever heard. It were a low growling hiss, real frightening. And Bart Euler, well, he took two steps back. And when he saw what happened next, he took a few more. Cause just then I swear, like they was coming right from the woodwork, came the rattlers. Every self-respecting sidewinder in Arizona came a slithering and answer to Mr. Rance's call. And some of them, they slumped up on Mr. Rance and went down his arms two by two, twisting themselves around like a corkscrew. They stopped when their heads reached his hands, so each hand had two sidewinders aimed square at Bart Euler. Yes, sir, it was like he were facing two double-barreled snake guns. Mr. Rance took a step forward. The sidewinders rattling filled the room till it was all you could hear. Mr. Euler, being not able to concoct a better plan, well, that's when he wet himself. Yep, he was so afeard, his knees knocking so bad, he just plumb wet his pants and followed it up by passing out right there at Mr. Rance's feet. Well, I may have helped him fall some by whacking his ankle with a crutch. Then I made sure he was passed out proper by clubbing his head with my other crutch. But still, it was mostly his fear, I reckon. And I can't blame him much, because even with Mr. Rance being my friend, I wet my own britches a touch that day. And that's about all there were to it, the strangest showdown ever, Arizona or elsewhere. Mr. Rance and Ma are up on Boot Hill now, after living a good long life together. See, Mr. Rance became my new pa and helped raise me on the straight and narrow. He showed me the rattlers can be right friendly if you know how to think at them proper. And now I'm the proudest son of a sidewinder there ever was. This has been Son of a Sidewinder.